three quarters of organizations have integrated AI into their business strategies, but just 12% are using it to a level that gives them a strong competitive advantage. I'm Helen Mossard, Chief Marketing Officer of IAB Europe, the European level association for the digital marketing and advertising ecosystem. In this episode of Talking AI, I'll be talking to two marketing experts about how AI is revolutionizing bidding strategies, helping marketers and their companies build that much needed competitive advantage. With me, I've got Nick Brady, the head of search bidding growth and optimization score at Google, and Alvaro Vadeja, who is the global data and cloud director at digital acceleration company, Making Science. Hello, so happy to be here. Hey, Nick, nice to see you. And hi, Alvaro, how are you? Hi, Helen, so nice to be here today. So let's start with you, Nick. For those that aren't yet familiar with this topic, can you please give an overview of AI in bidding algorithms? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we're at a really exciting time now, right? I mean, AI is all in the news. It's in the press. Everyone's kind of using it. My mom asked me about it now. So it's everywhere. And I think that's really exciting. Um, and especially the gen AI part is what everyone's talking about. But I think it's really important to, to not forget about the predictive AI part of it. And predictive AI is what's been you know around for many years and what's really used in, in, in bidding especially. Um, and even in, in a lot of other Google's tools. So Google Maps, for instance, uses predictive AI to help you get to your destination faster. Uh, in Gmail, it uses Smart Compose to actually finish complete sentences as you type based on how you type. In VBB, how it's used, I can kind of give you an example to, to illustrate that. So if everyone, you know, all, all three of us and everyone that's listening to this podcast were to search for sailing holiday, you know, each and every one of us would have a different context that we bring into that. We might be searching from a different place, a different time of day, on a different device, and different past behaviors that we might have exhibited before. And predictive AI is, is able to take in and incorporate all of that and to really make sure that it's able to look at those billions of signals to be able to predict how likely is each one of those people to convert and how much do we think they're actually going to spend. And then within value-based bidding, like that's how our predictive AI is able to really understand, here's the prediction of what we think is gonna happen from the user or the consumer and be able to set accurate bids based on what the advertiser has told us their goals are. Nick, that's such a great overview because I think it's so helpful. And most of our listeners will be very familiar between the difference of generative AI, predictive AI. So when it comes to value-based bidding, what are the main benefits for marketeers? Yeah, great question. I think one of the, the largest benefits to VBB is that it's it's aligned with your business objectives, right? Like it, you're actually passing that profit data or that revenue data or that lifetime value data, et cetera. And because it's aligned with your business objectives, that means that it can adapt in real time based on you know customer changes, business changes, or some kind of macro environment changes that might be happening. I and mean, I'll give you an example. So imagine a retailer who has several different product categories and each has varying you know, profit margins. So if you're passing margin data to VBB to optimize, VBB will automatically place those bids based on products that have higher margins, lower margins, and somewhere in between. So maybe those very high margin products will get a higher bids versus a lower margin product will get a lower bid. So when this is done over the course of you know, thousands or hundreds of thousands of products, depending on how large your company is, this means that it's actually maximizing your overall margin just using that data and being able to do that in real time. So this is perfect time to introduce Alvaro because we can now see whether those examples you gave of the benefits actually work in practice. So um, Alvaro, welcome. I know that you're a digital marketer and you've got huge experience in this field. So could you tell us and the listeners a bit about how making science is using predictive AI, especially in value-based bidding? Thank you, Helen. So about making science, we, we, we started seven years ago. What I think makes us different after all these seven years is that 40% of our staff are engineers right now in 14 countries, almost all around Europe. And since six years ago, we have been investing in a platform called Gauss AI. What is Gauss AI? It's a platform to make value-based bidding at scale, make it easy to, to get the data, make the prediction and activate the data into the bidding platforms like Google Ads. We have seen this as an advantage in, in the performance marketing in many sectors, like, for example, education, e-commerce, or travel. Alvaro. So in practice, how does that actually work then? I'm, you know, I'm familiar with value-based bidding, but 
can you give me an idea an overview of something that you've done for a client in this space yeah one of the customers who we, we just won a prize is Rio hotel chain so they are growing super fast and basically you know covid impacted them a lot uh, three years ago and because of that uh, they have to rethink their business model. Previous to COVID, nobody was thinking about cancellation policy in hotel chains. Basically, you, you book a room, you pay for it, that's it. But since COVID, everybody was concerned about may I be able to cancel the hotel or not? So everything changed. And from almost nobody canceling a room to more than 40% of the rooms being cancelled weeks before the people uh, going to the hotel. So we started to work with them on how getting signals like time of the day, device, channel, could make a prediction if those users are going to cancel or not. With this model, what we were able to tell Google and other platforms is, okay, is this booking make worth of 1,000 euros, for example, or maybe it's going to be a cancellation, so it's worth nothing. With this prediction, we were able to tell Google whether where they could uh, booking so users, and with that, Google algorithm was able to bring the good user that we were looking for that won't make a cancellation. I absolutely love that example. I mean, it's so cool and it's such a good use of, you know, being able to use BBB to really respond in real time based on, you know, whatever the changing world around us is, right? And it's often changing. I, I love kind of being able to show that flexibility with BBB. So what are what are some tips that, that you have for others to kind of maximize, you know, the value that you get from AI? Okay, first of all, I would say, Value-based reading and AI is for everybody. It's not just e-commerce or digital natives. Everybody could be using AI, and it's every day is becoming easier and easier. Just focus on trying to do things step by step. Maybe you today you get an accuracy that could be improved, but you have something better than yesterday. Then try to improve the. Don't focus on the quantity of data because sometimes we feel everybody's telling us, "I'm not ready to do predictive value-based reading because I don't have enough data." Believe me. It's better to have good data than much more data, okay? And then start thinking of real time. If you think of digital, digital has been about real time for many, many years. If you think, okay, we're going to make a prediction and I'm going to send the information maybe today, one week later, it's too late. Focus on making things fast and try to go real time for that. And I think if you take this thinking of AI is for everybody, data quality and data breaking data silos and also trying to be real time, you're gonna nail it. And uh, yeah, that, that's it. What do you think, Nick? What are your tips? Yeah, I mean I think, you know, we'll we'll go back to data. And I think first, you know, use your own data and and test it. Don't be afraid to test and kind of figure out, you know, what's gonna work best for your business. And so I I'd say, you know, the first tip is to check obvious score recommendations. Um to see, you know, which campaigns we're actually recommending value-based bidding strategies on. And, and look at the uplift that's also projected, you know, using your data to kind of forecast, you know, what that uplift might be. And I think, you know, where we see those positive simulations, that's a really good place to start and to think about testing. And the next is, I think, you know, as you're thinking about assigning values to use within value-based bidding is to make sure that they're actually aligned to your overall business goals. And I think it, you know, it, it sounds obvious when you say it out loud, um, but it doesn't always happen in practice. And the next part of this is to make sure that the data is accurate and the data is reliable. And you know whether that's through a conversion tag, app tagging, or an offline import, is making sure that nothing's going to break. So I think at the end of the day, like that is your data pipeline. Like that is what's feeding into AI to maximize your business results. So you really want to make sure it's accurate, it's reliable, it's not just going to break on you all of a sudden. And then lastly, is you know when you're actually about to switch to target row S and you're choosing a campaign to start testing with, is to make sure that you're, you're choosing a campaign that has meaningful volume. And I understand that advertisers you know, really wanna to try to mitigate risk as much as possible and, and often choose really small campaigns to test. But I think you know, with those small campaigns too, you know, it's really difficult to get those meaningful results and it takes a long time to be able to test with those. So try to kind of split the difference and find a campaign that has more meaningful volume when you first start testing. Thanks so much, Nick, for those great insights. And Alvaro, really, really appreciate the example that you gave um, of that holiday chain, who I must admit, I actually did holiday with two weeks ago in Malaga <laughs> and did not cancel. But that was a really, really useful, some great insights and takeaways there. So now it is time for our human or AI question round. This is one of my favourites. I'd like to think this is like our little Turing-style test. And 
for this episode, we're going to be looking at classic or popular sayings. But actually, when I look at some of these, I think that they may be more classic than popular. So Nick and Alvaro, let's not put man against machine, but let's have a look and see whether you can guess whether this was created by a human or whether it was created by a machine, by AI. So I'm going to read you the first saying and you can give me your feedback. So stop ironing my head. That has to be fake. It has to be. <laughs> it, it, it could be, it could be here, like a, another way of saying stop annoying me. Yes, stop. I don't know, like the British way would be stop doing my head in. That's maybe quite like a slang saying. Um, Alvaro, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I was thinking, you know, I'm from Spain. I was trying to translate it and I think if it would be in Spain, but no, no way. So you, you think that's AI? I think it's AI. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you here and now, that's actually human. <laughs> and it doesn't mean that. It means just that. So, like, stop annoying me. I don't know whether we can now bring this back to a popular phrase. Uh, let's go to the next one. So uh, the next one is, they could melt a diamond. They could melt a diamond. They could. Ooh. Ooh. So melting a diamond, what does that symbolise? Something... I would go for AI again. I never, never heard about that. He's in Spanish. <laughs> Never mind. Nick, what's your thoughts? I think I'm with you. Are you hearing it on the streets of Brooklyn? <laughs> <laughs> I am I am not hearing that on the streets of Brooklyn, although I could start it. I'll, I'll see how people respond to me. <laughs> um I'm going AI though. I don't know. I don't I'm going AI. You two are both spot on. So the meaning here is someone who's feeling anxious or under pressure. But I think that does show the power of AI because that's something I feel like it could actually tap on very easy. They could melt a diamond. Okay, so then the last one we're going to look at is to inflate a cow. So have you ever heard someone say to inflate a cow? I can't even really understand what it's, what it's all about inflating a cow. AI. AI. Yeah, you know what? I'm going, I'm going human on this one it's just it's it sounds similar enough to something else i've heard before and i can't quite put my finger on it but i'm still i'm sticking with human well so one of you is absolutely correct and uh nick it's you and maybe to me that sounded like a right. midwestern thing to inflate a cow but it but it, it's <laughs> it says here that it means to boast or to brag about something well, right on I'm, I'm from kentucky originally so that might be why i've heard it before <laughs> <laughs> You've got, you've got it out. Call up your friends and family and, and see what you think there. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much, guys. That was, uh, that was a really fun round. Nick, you've given great overview of how value-based bidding is currently working and how predictive AI is fueling that for clients that the likes of Alvero is working with. Can you talk about any future developments? Yeah, absolutely. So I think one example is, is how we're exploring ways to make switching conversion actions a bit more seamless. You know, we've heard feedback from advertisers that, you know, switching conversion actions can be a little bit difficult um, and it can be a really complex set of processes to really pull off. Uh, so we're looking at ways like how can we just make that a bit more seamless and simpler for, for marketers? So I think, you know, and, and lead gen advertisers especially have really long conversion cycles. Um, so that can get even more complicated. Uh, so this update that I was talking about will actually, you know, help lead gen advertisers, especially when they're moving from, let's say, an upper funnel conversion action to a lower funnel conversion action while on target CPA. So I think that will be really helpful. On the offline and kind of imported conversions piece, uh, we're launching new data ingestion products that are, again, privacy proof and durable, um, such as enhanced conversions for leads, which is actually live today. And then finally, we'll, we'll continue providing NUI guidance um, on VBB setup and insights, um, such as uh, a nudge that we actually introduced last year that essentially says, hey, we haven't quite finished training and learning about that value data you just started giving us. Um, wait a little bit longer before switching into a value-based bidding strategy. Like with conversion cycles, that's exactly where that kind of nudge and alert and guidance is especially helpful just to know just how long should I wait? When is VBB ready? Like, am I ready to start? And so that's an example of just trying to provide a few more guardrails to make it easier on our advertisers to, to use these bid strategies and to have insights into how they work, when they're ready, et cetera, to, to get the most out of them. 
Thank you so much, Nick. Um, it's been a pleasure having you here. And Alvaro, I really, really appreciate you coming along and telling us all the fantastic things that Making Science are doing for clients at the moment. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you. It was awesome being here. Thank you, Helen.